hope your answer was good. Because it's a traditional book, traditional media time again. Yay! Okay. Seriously. Traditional media time again. For those of you who are new, like my Reddit viewers, welcome. Um, my mom does the descriptions, so yeah, th there's that. But um, anyway, when I do a traditional media review on here, I am doing. A book. In this case, many books. Normally, I do comics and occasional video games and a bunch of other stuff. This is my world. And that's why it's called The World According to Bob. Or The Other World According to Bob. It's called The Other World According to Bob because of another book that I have yet to finish. Yeah. I wasn't expecting to finish this one. This one's been brewing in the can for quite a while. I've been working on this one for almost over a year. Maybe a little longer. But... It is the complete weird fiction work of H.P. Lovecraft, which they update yearly as more things become public domain, which I thought was cool. Um, each piece of Lovecraft's life and new story comes with a little bit of information as to where Lovecraft was in that time in his life. Which I found neat. At the end, you got a massive timeline tying it all together. I have the complete Conan here, too. Which I've been debating skipping over the Frost Giant's daughter. <laughs> Because um, I've already read The Frost Giant's Daughter on here. And you already know my opinion. It's probably not changed. It was an awesome book. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. It's designed by the same people, person, that designed this. And if it's designed half as well as this one, they got everything, except his death diary, which, who needs that? That's Anyway, it had classic works like The Shadow Over Innsmouth, The Call to Cthulhu, And it also had works it had the color outs out of space. It also had works like Till the Seas, I think it's called. The one where the seas all dry up that he wrote, he wrote toward the end. Um, that was kind of entertaining. I mean, I have used this, as you all know, as kind of an inspiration motivator type deal for when I'm writing my own book and. Gives me ideas. I mean, I I I use some Lovecraft stuff here and there. 
like Cthulhu and it's all public domain, which is kind of cool. Um, I remember reading a a s smaller volume of of what I thought was the complete works with a caregiver, the only caregiver who has ever asked me not to reference them in the story. Um, but anyway, Brittany did a good job at what she did. I mean, Yeah, that that's that. It was very much a fond memory for me. You know, reading this over with a friend. But having it read to you, having all the... Going back and rereading, like... The, the color out of space and... Stuff that I already had read was like kind of like revisiting those happy memories all over again. Um, Color Out of Space in particular was. Not a Nicolas Cage movie. I mean, I was happy to read The Mountains of Madness for that reason that the, that the movie never got made. For those of you who don't know, that almost got made into a movie but with Tom Cruise. I almost said by Tom Cruise. With Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise didn't write the movie. By Guillermo del Toro. Um, it, and, it, and the gold, the golden key, I think it's called, were my, one of my favorites, but it, it's really hard to pick. I liked one, in the story, when he combined he put all his friends in it, and it was just like a big blobby mess. But it was funny as all get out. Yeah, and the narrator did an awesome job. It's more my fault for not not being able to tell you about. These stories quite as accurately as I'd like. Um, so I did like it. Honest, I did. Even the one where he goes to Venus toward the end of the, the the character goes to Venus and the scientific rigor, let's say, wasn't there. Because they have him like functioning without his helmet and Yeah. I, I found it funny. <sighs> I mean, the classics are still there. They don't... They don't get rid of the Dunwich Horror or any of that. It more enhances the experience than anything.
you finally you find out what happens to Randolph Carter, which I don't remember that being a thing in the first time we went over this, but I I really like that story. Randolph Carter is one of the lesser known Lovecraft characters and I have to say I really related to it because I it I could really see myself doing what that character did. Um, if you're a big H.P. Lovecraft fan, not Stan, fan, you'll, you'll really enjoy this. It's definitely worth your time. I mean, it isn't as long in detail to say, like, the Bible or, or the, but it, it's definitely up there. Um, what else can you say? I mean, I really got into H.P. Lovecraft for a while there, and there are, there are other books that I have to review, like The Sandman, and, and, um, and, um, Red Panda. And a bunch of other stuff that you can find on this playlist, I'm sure. But I have to get back on to doing this again. I I really didn't think I'd ever finish this. Because Lovecraft is a quote, prolific writer. He didn't He was one of those people that would have been on Twitter. Tied my shoes today. And we'd all be like he tied his shoes again. You know. It would be like that. Um. I'm really anxious to have my own story out there and have it be a sequel to Sherlock Holmes and the Cult of Cthulhu. And. And have y'all just let me know what you think. If you're from the future, you, you can do that. Like, to this video. In the future. You can tell me, Hey, your, your, your thing didn't stand up to where this book was. Or, Hey, I really enjoyed your book. I mean, I, that's another one I gotta review. The original Sherlock Holmes in the cult. I've been Bob. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm sorry, I can't cover every Lovecraft book. And... I've been Bob. Bob out, I guess. Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe, thumbs up.
Hey everyone, Future Bob here. I have a little bit more to say. Um, it turns out But I'd like to make it clear why I liked the character of Randa. And point out to me that that may not have been clear originally why I liked the character of Randolph Gray. Because I love the idea of crashing your own funeral or will and testament just and the reason I referred to him as an it earlier is that he, he comes back but as an alien or a thing from another dimension or whatever I kind of had Gumby in my mind this guy comes back as Gumby. But that was just me. When you read it, you'll probably have something different in your mind. But when I was a little kid, I liked Gumby, so... Anyway, that's why I like that character. He puts on a fake beard, and at the end you find out. And what made what made through the gates of the, through the gates of the Silver Key worthwhile and different from all the other Lovecraft stories was that in most stories you can't. Reading them all at once, you kind of get that they they live in an implied world, a world that it's all connected. But the two two or three stories that featured Randolph Carter were the act were the actual first sequel series. They through the gates of the Silver Key and the last Will and Testament of Randolph Carter, I think was the name of the first one. Were actually sequel and original. Which it points out thanks to that history that he was pressured into writing th that particular book. And even the stuff Lovecraft was pressured into writing was awesome. I mean, The stuff he ghost wrote, like with Houdini and whatnot, was okay, but when Lovecraft was in his own little world, then he 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 was at his best. You know. And that's why years later they wanted to write that Mountains of Madness movie. And that's why Guillermo del Toro is so obsessed with getting it made. Um, 
because H.P. Lovecraft left quite a legacy. And that, I think, is the biggest thing I'd like for you, my audience, to take away from this video. It's about what you do in present time. You don't have to leave a massive Lovecraft legacy, but at least leave something to let them know you're here. That's all. Yeah. So, again, it's a shame that I couldn't find what the name of his story that he, he put all his friends in. That one was really enjoyable, too. Um, like I said, it was just a big globby mess. It was really enjoyable, though. It was funny. Once that that's another thing. Once he had a sense of humor, when he had a sense of humor, he could write funny. You know, he was very, he wasn't always like writing the shadow, where the shadow is very serious, very pulpy. Um... But I, I really did enjoy it. So. Hi. Um, well, the reason I wanted you guys to know about the Lovecraft titles. It wasn't that I I couldn't think of the names of the titles. It, it was more that I could think of the ones that everyone had already covered, obviously. And I wanted this review to stick out. Hopefully it does. Hopefully it motivates you to read and maybe work on a story of your own. Like I, like I said at some point in the video that You don't have to write as much as Lovecraft, but as long as you make the effort and remain literate, then you've done, you've done, a, um, good thing. It's about the quest, my friend.
Take care.